Today is part one of the new 15-part Stratocaster build series, and we're going to talk about templates. Let's go over some housekeeping notes before we get into this. Um, for those of you that requested the documents that I mentioned in the introductory video, and if you didn't see the introductory video, go back and look at it, because that sets the foundation for what we're going to cover in this 15-part series. Uh, but we've got a strat build by task in there. We've got an outline where you can kind of take notes, and there's a part list for the Stratocaster build and what you're going to need. Uh, if you have asked for those and you haven't gotten anything from me, it's probably because you used my website and we've had a real problem with uh, the website contact information going to spam and I haven't been getting it. So I tried to uh, get my web guy to fix that. We'll see if it happens, but really use just info at MaximumGuitarWorks.com and that will definitely get directly to me and I shouldn't have a spam issue. Uh, but keep that in mind. If you haven't requested these documents, request them and I will send them to you um, pretty quickly. Also, I've had comments about people can't find the templates on my website to purchase. At this point in time, I don't sell anything directly from my website. I list a few things and even those things um, need to be updated dramatically. But you know what? Right now, I just don't have time to do it all. So unless somebody wants to take over kind of doing some maintenance on my website for me, it's gonna be a little bit inadequate for a while until I can kind of get ahead of things. So if you need to purchase some knobs or templates or you just have questions about something, the best thing is just to email me and I will certainly respond as soon as I can. I've got several areas I wanna to cover today and several different ways on how you can either acquire or uh, produce your own templates that I want to cover. Um, because not everybody's going to be in a position to purchase my templates. It may not make sense to you, either financially or you have the tools to make it yourself, and that's fine. Uh, but I'm going to give you some pointers along that way. This, As far as the 15 different episodes go for this series, this is not going to be the most information. Um, it could be a shorter episode, but what I'm gonna do is take a little extra time because we have it in this one to discuss some techniques of templates themselves. The next episode, we're gonna get right into the next. So it's gonna get pretty fast, pretty quick. So enjoy the relaxed pace of this episode while you have it. All right, why do we use templates? You can certainly draw out a guitar body on a body blank by hand and have the shape that you want and go ahead and make that guitar body. In fact, recently I just saw Ben Crow do that for one of his great guitar build off uh, guitars that he's working on. And so you can certainly do that. Now Ben's a little bit more talented than me so he can do things freehand. I like tools and jigs and things like that because it kind of helps me be a little bit more precise in the way that I work. But you, you can approach it that way. Now I will tell you, if it's a one-off, that may be a practical solution for you. But if you want to build a guitar that looks like a certain X model of guitar, then you're probably gonna wanna use a template. If you've got a custom guitar that you are going to, let's say, make 10 or 20 or 100 of those exact guitars, you're going to want to use templates. Now, obviously, that we're not talking about CNC world because that's a whole different world and that's what's used for production in order to make sure that there is repeatability and accuracy in those things. But if you're building a handful or so, templates is going to be your best way to get it done. Or if you're going to build one and you want that one to be really, really precise, templates are the best way to do that. So this, this whole series is designed to emulate what I teach in class. The last episode is what I would do on the first class, and I talk about expectations of the class and materials and parts that they're going to need and things like that. The second class, which is this episode of the video series, 
I go in, I, we start talking about templates, but we go in and start doing templates. And there's been a transition that I've kind of been involved in in the school. Originally, when I got involved with the program, the whole idea was um, everybody comes in and haphazardly designs their own body shape and then produces their own um, basically blueprints and templates from quarter inch MDF material like this. And what I found was people aren't prepared to really design their own guitars at that point. Most of them are first time guitar builders, maybe first time electric guitar builders. Okay, so, so they need a foundation first. So I changed the program and the curriculum to require a Strat or Tele as the first build because I just don't know a better way to get the foundation of basic electric guitar building than doing what Leo Fender invented back in the 1950s. It is just absolute genius and the more that I kind of get involved, it's, it blows my mind how far ahead his thinking was. Very practical, production oriented, efficient, and it is a great place to learn. When I made this transition, I started making acrylic templates uh, for the students to use. Not enough for every student to have their own copy, but you know, kind of share and and have maybe several sets that would that would kind of get through the semester. And what I found was there was a lot of damage happening to those templates. And it's kind of frustrating. Acrylic templates can be repaired. I use your basic automotive Bondo, I think is great because it, it, it cures quickly, it gets hard, but yet it's very sandable. It's actually easier to sand than the acrylic, so it's easy to kind of fit, fix and patch little areas if nicks were done with a router bit or, or something like that. Um, but there was a lot of repair that I had to do, so I kind of morphed that into, okay, you're gonna take my templates and then you are going to make your own templates from my templates, okay, that's a little safer operation just to kind of flush cut it, and therefore you have a replica that you can use, you can take it home with you, and, and it'll work fine. And that did work really good until I reinvented my templates. When I reinvented my template system, I went with um, these precision hardened steel drilling bushings as alignment, off body alignment points, so that every single body template, whether it be for the pickup cavities, the electronics cavities, the neck pocket, it all drops into the exact same dead alignment. And then the other thing I, I did is I made um, threaded T nuts basically that, that secured flush mounted into there so that these handle grips could be attached to there then you could kind of swivel these around and get the best grip possible um, so that you can have better control, especially when you're routing that one and three quarter inch body on the router table. Uh, it's a very scary operation. You know, they say that necessity is the mother of invention. I believe I disagree with that. The mother of invention for this new template system was paranoia. Total, utter paranoia that one of my students was gonna hurt themselves trying to manhandle that, that body and template around that router table with that huge two inch bit sticking out of the table. So this has worked really well for that, but that's the transition that has happened during the course of the years I've been doing this. So if you've already ordered your Stratocaster template set from me, you've got the best and safest template set available without a doubt and you're ready to go. You probably don't even need to watch the rest of this video. But for the rest of you, I'm going to go through um, different options that you can do to create templates. Now, I will give one hint to those who did purchase these templates. Uh, if you choose to, you can make copies of these templates and use the copies just in case you do something where you would damage the template, then this would be replaceable and you keep these as your master. Now I would tell you that even though these are brown in the video and people actually think that they're, they are MDF themselves, they are not. They are acrylic 
It's just that I keep the protective paper coating on there uh, for the shipping process so that when you folks get them, uh, they're in pristine condition. Now they're gonna get scratched over time, but they hold up very well um, functionality. And like I said, they're, they're very repairable if something does happen. And I will add one other point if you did purchase these templates. If you do something catastrophic to the template and, and you can't patch or repair it, do not throw away these templates uh, extract the hardened steel drilling bushings from them. They are a major cost of the way that I build these because uh, I had to custom order these drilling bushings in the size I wanted and the height I wanted. And I had to order like a thousand of them in, in order to get a half decent price point on them. Save those, send those back to me, and I will credit you that in producing another template if that's ever necessary. So just keep that in the back of your mind. But these are high quality quarter inch acrylic templates that will hold up great for you. So if you choose to make copies and use the copies in MDF, that's perfectly fine. Although I will say that uh, I do like the transparency of the acrylic because it makes it a little easier to make sure that I'm aligned where I need to be. I can see my center line under the acrylic and things like that, just to make sure everything's right. It's kind of nice having that visibility. I used to take this like big, large size, almost butcher block type paper, but that has graph on it. And I would measure out the dimensions and I would use curve, French curves and other type of curve tools to make my lines and try to create my designs. But again, that's when I'm creating a, a unique design. But the advantage of doing it on paper is you can really kind of sketch a race, sketch a race and kind of modify it. Um, and then when you're all done, you can cut out that, uh, that paper template and then you can use spray adhesive to glue it onto a piece of MDF. Then you can cut it out with a bandsaw on the outside cuts, with a jigsaw on the inside cuts, and then you'll have to use something like a spindle sander uh, with different size spindles in order to kind of smooth out those curves and get those inside dimensions exactly what they need to be. But that's a good way to do it. The problem comes in if you're trying to replicate, for instance, in this case, a Stratocaster. In which case, the process is to try to find blueprints of said guitar, and, and then you can either print those and then glue them on just like we talked about, or you can import those into a CAD program and then generate your lines and then print them out and put them on your MDF or whatever material uh, blank and do that same exact process. So what I wanna show you is how I go about starting a new body template based upon blueprints, for instance, like the Stratocaster. Okay, if you wanna work from a starting design, a blueprint, what you need to do is pull up your favorite web browser and you're gonna type in a search. In this particular case, I'm gonna look for Stratocaster Blueprints. So when you pull that up, the first hit that I get is called Fender Stratocaster Guitar Templates. And I click on that and that takes me to this website that has a whole bunch of guitar templates on there, okay? Electric Herald is this site. And I come down here and I find a whole bunch of different Stratocaster templates. Now what I'm gonna use is this one here, the 1962 body, and I'm gonna go ahead and download that. And this is what we come up with. And this is actually, if you look down the right lower corner, Fender Musical Instruments. This has got the original drawings from 1962 and every single dimension that you could ever want. We can pull up this PDF and we can create a print of, of this um, blueprint and we can use that to glue onto our piece of MDF and cut and machine. Now there's two different ways you could certainly accomplish that. Um, there are services out there, uh, like the place formerly known as Kinko's FedEx office. 
you could send these files or take these files on a thumb drive and you could print them out on a large printer if you do not have a big plotter style printer. Uh, the other thing that you could do is go right into the print command and uh, you probably have the same thing as I have, but I go and print actual size and then I say I want a poster size and what it will do is print this up by dividing it into segments. In this particular case, it's four sheets by three sheets for 12 total sheets to tape together this entire blueprint. And that is one way that you could certainly do and do that and take that and print it right out. Now, because this particular blueprint is pretty busy and has maybe more information than we need, you could actually edit it. A PDF is just vector art is all it is. So I can import this vector art directly into my CAD program. I'm using Rhinoceros, Rhino for short. And I can bring this in there and I can manipulate things. I can basically highlight lines and begin deleting lines throughout this that I don't need. All right, and there's quicker ways to do it, but, uh, but either way, it's gonna take a lot of time to come through and delete all of the extra lines, but it's time well spent if you wanna clean it up. Now, saving a copy of this with all the dimensions will help you refer back to and make sure that if you have to tweak or scale anything, uh, that you can do that with, with factory original accuracy. Now, the other advantage of pulling it into CAD and tweaking it is if you do have access uh, to a CNC, laser, router, or what have you, then you can cut out your own templates out of MDF, acrylic, or, or whatever you choose to. Um, you can cut them out of aluminum if you want on a CNC. Uh, but I find the acrylic is cost effective and it holds up extremely well and it doesn't compress like MDF, so therefore you'll have greater accuracy of the bearing cutting bits uh, when using routers. So in this case, I pull up my laser software, I import from my CAD software any of the templates that I would like to print out and I line them up onto uh, the acrylic that I have. And typically if I get an order for a complete set, I've got one huge sheet in there and I'm cutting it all out at once. And I get that set up, I get all my specifications set, and all I've got to do at this point is hit the start, and I'm going to send it right to the laser, and I'm going to cut out my own template, in this case, a fretboard template. And with CNC technology, it not only allows you to produce very precise templates based upon CAD drawings, but it allows me to put in all of those directions and descriptions and specifications directly into my templates to make it easier uh, to remember the different steps and the depths of cut and things like that. It also allows me to precisely mark where my hardened steel drilling bushings are gonna go. All right, on this particular fretboard template, I've got two uh, around the first fret, and then I've also got a couple around the 20th fret. And those are gonna be heat pressed into place uh, to provide exact alignment of those bushings and therefore your alignment pins consistently every single time, probably within a few thousandths of accuracy, uh, which certainly in woodworking is more than good enough.
All right, and there we have it. Here is our template with all the cutouts that we need for reference and or for alignment. All you have to do is peel the paper off and you'll be ready to use it. Okay, so I'm reassembling all of these sheets that I printed out on my uh, just regular printer. And it's kind of nice working with blueprints because they do have, you know, the alphanumeric chart to them. So it kind of helps you get everything lined up pretty well. There is a border on most printers. So therefore you do have to take that into account, uh, that printing border. And I've been doing most of this off camera because I figured it wasn't anything that would be too interesting. I try to match up numbers and letters whenever I can and then lines and fractions of lines to make this as perfect as possible, but it's not going to be the same, the same deal as being able to print the template directly from the CAD, you know, through a CNC device. Uh, but we can get pretty close for sure. Just have to do a little bit more fine tuning and tweaking. Okay, so now that I got all this tape together, really this is the main part that I'm looking for for the body, uh, but we could save other sections, cross sections, if it would help us. Uh, and you could just take scissors and cut that out. I'm gonna try to use just a blade here to get it close. All right, there it is. Now, this would be a whole lot easier if you just had it printed in one sheet, and it's even easier if you just send it to a CNC device uh, to cut out your template for you. But this will get you where you need to be if that's the best you can do uh, based upon your resources. And that's the key. That's what we're talking about, okay? Always strive to do the best you can do with your time, talents, and resources. That, to me, is the definition, I would say my definition, of excellence. All right, so... Um, this is where we start. We would glue that down. Uh, we would then take it to a bandsaw. We would cut out pretty close to the edge, and then we would use sanding devices, belt sanders, disc sanders, to clean up the outside edge, uh, oscillating spindle sanders to clean up the inside curves, uh, and then you'll have to use a jigsaw um, or something like that to cut out the majority of the inside areas. And you'll probably need two of these. This is the way I do my templates. So the pickups become one template with the, uh, with the trim slot. And then I make another copy of this uh, for things like the electronics cavity. Anything that intersects, um, you really can't make it one big open area because they have different depths to them. And those different depths will become a problem when you're using the router on that. So... I try to separate these into maybe two templates and then one on the back for that tremolo. And you'll have to find, um, and you'll have to obviously these dotted lines, dashed lines are the backside and you'll have to make templates that line up with that. And that's where the alignment pin systems of what I utilize and done in CAD work so flawlessly because now it can connect front or back and still have the exact same alignment center line and, um, and also fore and aft alignment for those front versus back uh, routes. So there you have it. This is the point where you're ready to cut it out, do your shaping. The nice thing about MDF is it sands so easily that you can take your time and you can use manual or machine sanding devices and get it right up to the line, nice and slow, and have yourself a really close to perfect template. And, and that's how you would do it if that's the way you want to. Now, I also showed you a lot of the benefits of acrylic templates and how I cut those out and how I pull them into CAD and I can tweak them and I can customize them with things like my little um, alignment pin um, features and such like that. 
So if you're in a position where um, purchasing a set of templates is in your budget, I highly recommend you will not find a better set, both from accuracy, based upon the way uh, that we do this, and from a safety standpoint because of the features that are built in. And you'll see more of that as we go, or you can refer back to some of my other template videos I've done in the past to see and understand how that works. So if I can help you get ready for this uh, big series that we're gonna be doing by acquiring templates or any other information that you need um, in order to assist in making your templates, then let me know, leave comments below, and I will certainly answer any questions there. If you haven't already request, requested the documents um, that I am offering to send you to kind of help organize yourself for this project, I would recommend that you send me an email at info at MaximumGuitarWorks.com and I will get these over to you. So that is all for part one of our 15 part Stratocaster build school-based series. And I hope you're looking forward to the next one, which is starting to build the neck. So until then, remember, no matter what you do, start with excellence.